again. It's you again. And we're back. We're back. Like five minutes later. We are three-fourths of a bottle already in, so it's going to be a good time. Good motherfucking time. Yeah. And it's... Why does it take forever to focus? Oh, there it is. How cute. I typically pick out wine for... Well, one, the price. First, I'm like, can I afford this? Yeah. And then once I find my price range, then I'm like, okay, what label is cute? Mm Mm-hmm. I know. So with this company, which we'll get into in a yeah. minute, but they, when you flip through their catalog, it, there's no like set theme. No. Every label is completely different because it each is. label goes with a story. We didn't yeah. mention that last time, but oh, it's yeah, true. super cute. It's so cute. And so this company, like number one, they like find wines that mm-hmm. don't have added sugar. And Thank that's God. like what we need, number one, because we have to stay skinny. I'm trying to get skinny thick. <laughs> I'm borderline starving myself already. Can you guys tell? <laughs> Your face, like, you're like, I'm trying to get skinny thick. <laughs> like, serious. Like, no, no, I am serious. No, I'm she so really serious. Is. She's starving herself. Basically. Pretty much. I don't recommend it. I also have a very strenuous job. It requires me to run a lot. She hates her job. So if you know of any places in hi- that are hiring a Branson, um, contact your girl. Uh, something Sinister Podcast something at gmail.com. Something that doesn't involve animal shit, preferably. <laughs> and sand. No sand. She no sand. sand. She's got to get these extensions taken out. She can't even like deal with the sand. Guys, I'm going to lose all my hair. I'm going to look like a rat next time I'm on this podcast. <laughs> anyway, oh no, Post back to the wine. Yeah, this is gonna be a like very... my neck is getting red. I'm getting uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, Scout and Cellar is the brand. We aren't even sponsored by them, but we want to be. So, so go yeah, buy it and need... say. Yeah, put say, it in the the checkout notes. Yeah, say. just say, "Oh, did anyone refer you?" Yeah, something sinister podcast did. Yeah, no, but really, the bottles are like I don't know, like ten to twenty dollars yeah. a bottle. They're not bad at all. I think we got six for like a hundred bucks or yeah. something. The like, more you buy, they like do a discount off. Yeah, it's awesome. And they ship it. They shipped it right to you, right? Yeah, they ship okay. it to, to the house. I'm not an adult. Great. I don't receive alcohol. Alexa receives all my. No, she's an AA. <laughs> I've got a like portion control. <laughs> Basically, what we're saying is I'm falling apart. <laughs> oh, God. Actually, I'm not. I was for a weekend. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> no, not again. Anyway, so anything else? Any other news? Shit. Um, any, like, confessionals you want to do? <laughs> well, no. We have aired out all of my dirty laundry. <laughs> Two episodes now. <laughs> There's no more confessionals except, okay, here, okay, what? you did make me think of a story. What? It literally doesn't matter at all, but what? I think this is funny and it was funny. discussed recently. So, you know how like, we name our cars? Yeah. So, we, when I was in college, we would name our houses. Okay. Depending on, like, what party spot we were going to go. Mm-hmm. So, like, we had one friend, um, or one of our houses one time was called the Icebox. Okay. And it was because this was White House. It was literally shaped as a box. It was total shit, but it was always fucking freezing. On no the heater. I, I think we had one. We probably was just too cold. too broke to turn it yeah, on. Yeah, you're like, we can't spend that extra twenty dollars. Freeze to that. Um, Put on an extra sweater. And then this other house that I lived in, we called it the confessional. Oh my god! Because you know how like some old school kitchens have like the divider, yeah, and they're like usually poles. Yeah. Well, this one had like a screen that looked like a Catholic confessional. confessional. So we were like going to the confessional tonight <laughs> for a party. <laughs> Anyways, icebox and confessional were mine, and then we had the brothel. That was in one oh of my, my friends' god. house. I can only Was it really a brothel? I, I'm guessing. I don't been. remember. Yeah. I don't know if people Is there just a red light? Have like, a lot of sex? <laughs> I don't know. But that wasn't mine. I lived in the confessional because I was a good Catholic girl. She was the, like, priest in the confessional. <laughs> I was touching all the little boys. <laughs> 
Actually, she that's not true. Canceled. If you brought a penis near me in college, I would have like. She would have screamed. I would have cried. She was terrified. I would have cried. <laughs> so take that. All right. Did you have a house name ever? No. You never named your house. No. Here. Mm-mm. Never named my house. All right. Well, that's the end of the story. Good that talk. That's the end of the story, and we're done. And we're done. <laughs> All right, that was episode 28, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking where we just take 10 shots and go to bed. Right, so, right, right. It's fine. No, um, so let me jump right in. Anything else? No. Okay. Videos and podcasts are used for entertainment purposes only. All <laughs> information discussed was found on the internet. Keep in mind, we will talk all things sinister that may not be suitable for all audiences, viewer and listener. Discretion is advised. So, episode 28, we are talking about Paul John Knowles, a.k.a. the Casanova Killer. Okay. His serial killer. What's our drinking word? I don't know this one. You're going to have to give me options like the last time. Okay. So, um... How drunk do you want to get? I mean, we still got half a bottle, so we can keep going. Strangle? Okay, strangle. Strangle is the word. Strangle. One more thing. Strangle. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Strangle. Strangle? Oh. <laughs> How do you say? <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> Time out. <laughs> Wait. You at home. Shut up. Wait. <laughs> She's <laughs> strangle? Yes. Strangle. 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 <laughs> Wait, you say it. Say it. Well, I can't now. I can't talk. I can't. Do anything but laugh. <laughs> Strangle. <laughs> okay, that word. Strangle. <laughs> Why can't I talk properly? <laughs> oh my god, this is great. <laughs> okay. Strangle. Strangle. If you hear that word, drink along. Drink along if you are 21 and up, get drunk. Because Strangle. we are going to say that a lot. I don't know why I say them like that. <laughs> One time, okay, can I tell a quick story? <laughs> okay, one time, I was at, this, and this is relevant. I clearly have an issue. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, I was at the, the meat counter, and I said I want a case. <laughs> So I want a Casey strip. And he goes, what? I said, I want a Casey strip. And he goes, you want a shrimp? I said, no. I said, I want a strip. And he goes, shrimp? I said, the Casey steak. And he's like, oh, a strip. Strip. And I was like, no, it's a strip. I mean, I think you say you sound fine, like you're saying it. Stir rip. I don't say stir rip. Like you're not sounding it out. It's a strip. Strip. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he thought I was saying shrimp because I have too much (laughs) sh and strip. God damn. Okay. All right. Just tell the fucking story. We're gonna practice words. Okay. Especially S H words or S T words. All right. Oh, I hurt. Ooh, we are here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Paul John Knowles. Okay. <laughs> the cast. <laughs> oh. <Paul. Hello. laughs> the cast um. of a killer. He was a serial killer, uh, obviously, known for killing up to 35 people in just five months. In 1974. 35 people in 1974. That was the same year as my guy. Yeah, so how... So in five years, 35 people. How many people per month? 
<laughs> three and a half people a month. <laughs> well, we're convicted. Yeah, you're you're almost there. Got anyway, <laughs> he got the name Casanova Killer for his good looks and because he was charming. He was actually kind of cute. Hmm. If you look at him, he kind of reminds me of a younger Johnny Depp. Ooh, like Daddy. kind of, but not. So look up Casanova Killer. Okay. And, you know, he, he oh, wasn't... yeah. See what I mean? Kind of like young Johnny Depp. Now, that's a bad picture. But that one... <laughs> <laughs> that one's bad. That one wasn't his. That's not him. Okay. So, yeah. The cigarette hanging out of his mouth. You know, like James Dean and Johnny Depp. Yeah, I was going to say James Dean. Yeah, for like sure. Kind of. So, that's why he got the name Casanova Killer. Um, he was born April 17th, 1946 in Orlando, Florida. Um, he is an Aries. And, you know, back to what Caden says, uh, specifically in serial killers, they have a tendency to resort to violence when mm -hmm. things head south. Um, they heat up quickly and they lash out due to their quick temper. So, on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being worse, Aries are fourth, right? Number fourth. Four. Yeah. So, it's an instance. Ugh, it's insane. Like, there are so many serial killers, with Capricorns being number one and Aries being number four. Um, one article said that Aries serial killers tend to be tactless. They lack organization. And they are literally only motivi motivated. Motivated. <laughs> I can't talk now. You're rubbing off on me. <laughs> They are literally only motivi motivated, <laughs> oh my god, by being. <laughs> Guys, you just listen. This, shut up. <laughs> you all shut up and listen. <laughs> they are literally only motivated by being number one. They want to be the best, and they want to be number one, the best serial killer. Do you think I'm unorganized? I think I'm pretty organized. Maybe not uh, mentally, but physically. <laughs> I'm not mentally organized. No comment. Oh, anyway. Oh. <laughs> what name? <laughs> um, no, but it's true because even in the last story, like he wanted to be the best. Like he yeah. wanted to outdo the Ripper. Yeah. And it wasn't Jack the Ripper, but you know, yeah. the, Ripper, the Russian, the Russian Ripper. Ripper. He wanted to outdo the Ripper. And like this guy, you're going to hear, like, he is wanting to outdo anybody possible. And so it's just, it's crazy because they do. They want to be the best. They want to be number one. They want to be the best serial killer with the number of victims, the highest number of victims. So, yeah. Um, talking about Aries in general, they are known for being passionate and motivated and good and bad. But especially whenever they have their minds made up. So when they have their minds made up, there is no right or wrong. You are not changing their mind in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. So, is that true? Honestly, <clears throat> I try to be pretty um, open-minded. But yeah. I have to challenge myself to be open-minded. Yeah. You know what so, I mean? But if like, I have to tell myself, up, like, you're going to, you are going to hear both sides. Otherwise, yeah. I probably would be pretty this or that. But yeah, I'm super impulsive. Yeah. Like, I'm when getting you want my something, you're getting it. extensions <laughs> taken out, and I'm really sad about it. But since now that I've decided I'm going to do it, it's She's like, like I'm ready to it happen to tomorrow. <laughs> Amanda from Missouri, who can't get me in until April 12th. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. Uh, anyway, so Knowles was raised in a Florida boys' school, which is similar to like a foster care. Um, not much is said about his parents other than that his dad abused him at a very young age, like severely abused him. Sexual, physical. Physical. <laughs> just okay. physically abused him, um, and he couldn't really take care of him. So he sent him to this boys' school, and he was like, you guys take care of him. Um, so his childhood's kind of interesting. He, from a very young age, didn't care about authority. Um, if anything, he liked to see what he could get away with. Um, he would refuse to do his homework. He would talk back to his teachers, to adults. Um, he even stole from school often. Um, and at the age of seven, he stole a bicycle. Hmm. Yeah. So seven? Seven. Oh, my God. So just a little rebel. Jeez. Yeah, like he is ready to go. <clears throat> wow. The school that he was in, it was called Florida School for Boys. Um, this school was 
a reform school. Um, so, you know, you sent your kid there if they're being bad and to kind of reform them and to make them, you know, a better kid. And that's what his dad did. He was like, I'm done. He's you know, I'm not listening to me. I'm clearly beating the shit out of him, and it doesn't do anything, so I'm done. So he sent his son to the school. Um, the school was apparently known um, for abusing these children, oh. torturing <clears throat> the children, the boys, and even murdering some of the boys. What? Yeah. Wait, yeah. where is the school? In Florida. It was called Florida School for Boys. That's like what's coming out about, uh, what's it called? The Canacook. Well, Canacook. Yeah. Um, but the one that Paris Hilton went to. Yes. Turnabout? Yeah. yeah. No. Turnabout Ranch. Is it Turnabout Ranch? I Because that's the one that Dr. Phil is associated with. I watch a lot of mm -hmm. Dr. Phil. Well, bad baby said it herself. Yeah. <laughs> she really did. Yeah, I mean, she was like, he, she lost like, my life up even more. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, so that's what that school was apparently known for, and it said that he didn't really talk about anything. You're going to hear throughout his whole experience, like, he was not a narcissist in that way. Okay. He didn't want to talk about those things. He didn't want to talk about what had happened to him or what he did. Um, so we don't really know what happened to him as a child, but one can only assume that the school is abusing and torturing boys murdering, and murdering boys. You can only imagine what had to happen to him. So instead of reforming him for the good, they reformed him for the bad and made him into a serial killer. Yikes. Well, and yeah. I'm just like, this is Florida. It's not like we're dealing with like a third world country. How is they, How are they getting away with... I, I get how they mask like cults and abuse, but yeah. like murder? Murdering boys. Mm -hmm. I know. So, whenever he was 12 years old, um, a girl that he liked rejected him, and he punched her in the face. <laughs> what well, Bowie? Yeah, he's like, fuck you, bitch. Um, oh he, so, this just kind of tells you, like, the rage that he had in his life, you know, as a child. Like, I read so many stories about, like, him doing this, or him, like, hitting teachers or like just fighting other oh kids God. like it's just sad um he idolized mobsters and other criminals particularly he was obsessed with bonnie and clyde he's like i want to travel the country and kill people and get away with robberies and all of that like that is what he was obsessed with did he with. know that bonnie and clyde went down in a very violent brutal like embarrassing manner yeah and you're going to be shocked to hear what happened to him. Oh, God. Yeah. So, let's just get right into the meat and potatoes. 1965. <laughs> he is 19 years old. Um, at this time, he's often stealing cars. He also takes police officers hostage because he's stealing cop cars. So, I read 19? 19. 19. So, I read a story where he <laughs> would go up to a cop car... With a police officer in it, and like steal the police officer's car with the cop in it, and hold him at gunpoint by stealing the police officer's gun. What did he say? Move gun. over, bitch! Like get in the next seat. It's wild, wild. So um, he ends up getting arrested at 19 years old. He's serving time in prison okay. in a Florida state prison. Uh, fast forward to a couple of years, he uh, meets this woman named Angela Kovic. Um, she starts writing him in prison just like randomly, um, and they fall in love. She was a divorcee from San Francisco, California. Um, they fell in love, and he had her come and visit the prison where he proposed to her. A Ted Bundy <laughs> story, right? Holy shit. Gross. I know. She accepted, and at this point in time, she started paying a lot of money to lawyers to try to get him released early. Because, again, he was in prison for, like, stealing vehicles and holding police officers hostage. Like, what, anyone yet, what would it but. take for you to be convinced that, like, he was a good guy? Nothing. Nothing. Like, if you did all that shit, there's nothing you could say to convince me. Right. Right. So, uh, parole came through in May 1974. He's 28 at this time. So, 
He was in prison, you know, for nine years. Um, 28 years old. He flew directly whenever he got paroled out to San Francisco. Um, but Angela changed her mind about marrying him. Good. She visited a psychic, and the psychic said, um, there is a man in your future that I am seeing who is very dangerous. And so she dumped him. Good for the psychic. The psychic is like, yeah. bitch, run. Yeah, she's like, fucking run before you die. You didn't need a psychic for that. Right. You could ask your neighbor, Anyone. your mama. Fucking the security or the guard at the yeah. prison, they would have said, You could ask the McDonald's drive through <laughs> teller. Hey, you're like, like, No. no. <laughs> Dump him. So she did. She dumped him. Um, it is rumored that night. Uh, he went out and murdered three people <gasps> in the streets of San Francisco. It's not provable because, again, he didn't really talk about anything. Right. But it's rumored that he did. Oh, my God. I want to go to the psychic. Right. So, um, he ended up flying back to Florida. He's like, fuck California. I'm going back to Florida. For real, though. Went back. Yeah, I know. Went back <laughs> to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Shortly after arriving, he got into a bar fight, and he went to jail. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. You know. But. <laughs> but. July, two months later, he picked the lock in the jail and escaped. I'm sorry. What year are we in? Are we in the fucking colonial times? How are you picking locks in 1974? I know. What is that? What is he, like, luring the dog over yeah, like a fucking like, pirate? Like, come here, puppy. You got the keys. <laughs> yeah, right. Seriously. Picking a lock in 1974, 1974 in a prison should not be a thing. Yep, and he got out. And all hell broke loose. <sighs> okay. So, uh, that night, he broke into a woman's home, 65-year-old Alice. Uh, he mm. bound her. He gagged her while looking for money and valuables. She didn't die yet. He just tied her up. Um, ended up taking her car, but Alice choked to death on the gag and died. Oh, my God. No. That's, um, she probably, like, freaked out and, like, stuff. I don't know what happened. Or maybe shoved it down her throat. Who knows? Yikes. Um, I know. So he stayed in town for a few days, driving her car around, and police connected him with the crime, with the crime of Alice and the murder, and they started spreading his picture all over TV and all over the local I wonder how. newspapers. Yeah, I don't know how. I tried to, like, read into how they connected him to maybe it. Maybe someone but, saw him. But or... he had just escaped out of jail. So maybe they just put, like, two and two together. And they're like, mm. oh, yeah, that's our guy. I bet that was it. That's our guy. That's him. <clears throat> so, uh, at this time, he was looking for a place to dump the car, kind of get rid of it, because he saw, obviously, you know, on the news, looking for this person in this car. And he saw 11-year-old Lillian and her 7-year-old sister... Um, I left. He convinced the girls that he was friends with their mom, and the girls got in the car. Um, he kidnapped both of them, strangled them, and then dumped their bodies in a swamp outside of town. Oh my god. 11 and 7 years old. So I know someone who staged their daughter being kidnapped to teach them a lesson. <gasps> she, her daughter went to the bathroom by herself. Oh I want to say she was like eight and she had her friend go in there and say, Hey little girl, you're going to come with me. I know your mom. And luckily my relative, it was a relative of mine that this happened. That to. is terrible. Yeah. Isn't that it's tra terrifying. traumatizing? That's traumatizing. Why did they do that? You um, talk about it. You don't stage it. No, they staged it to make sure to test her. They staged it to test her. That is fucked up. Yeah, well, she's a meth head now, so. Okay, well, yeah. Well, there, <laughs> that's probably why. Probably. Unbelievable. Childhood trauma. Don't do that to your kids. Do not yeah. stage shit like that. That's awful. No, that's traumatizing. Teach that's them. just, like, it actually happening to them. But also, like, in this case, obviously teach your kids that it is going to happen. Because I have a feeling these kids were taught that this no. was going to happen. Right. So. You scream and run. Bloody murder. Yeah. And yell rape. And yell rape. Actually, I think now you're supposed to actually yell fire. 
Yeah. Because people fake the rape word so right. much that they're like, now nah, you need to be on fire. Right. So, anyways. <clears throat> yeah. Story. Wow. That's sad. That's awful. It is sad. So, the next day, um, in Atlantic Beach, Florida, Knowles uh, broke into the home of a woman named Marjorie. She was in her 50s. Um, he strangled her with a nylon stocking. Wait, nylon stocking? Isn't that like the thing? Pinios. Can you imagine how tight you have to pull to strangle someone with pantyhose? Yep. I know. Oh my god. Just hang on to that. He then saw a teenage hitchhiker whose name is unknown. They referred to her as Jane Doe. He raped her and strangled her. And this is all happening like relatively quickly. Like within days. Relatively like this, quickly. Yeah. yeah. That's why I said 35 people in five months. Three wow. and a half people per month. <laughs> I wonder how he kept half a person alive. <laughs> it's not funny. August 23rd, uh, he broke into the home of a woman named Kathy. She was in her 50, oh sorry, no, 23 years old. Um, he strangled her with a telephone cord while her three-year-old son watched. He didn't hurt the three-year-old boy, thankfully. But, um, okay. I hope he is doing okay. <clears throat> I wonder if he's ever given, like, an interview. Yeah, I don't know. But he's fucked I don't see anything. That's sad. That is so, because three, okay, so. Three years old. I feel like. Three to six. <clears throat> they say you don't really have real memories, memories until you're six. Yeah. But obviously, like, a few people can re recall yeah. some things. I wonder what, what he recalls, if yeah. anything. Because yeah. that's so traumatizing. Yeah. I feel like it could go either way. He could remember anything or, or nothing. nothing. Yeah. yeah that's that's scary. So he then traveled north. Um, September 3rd, he met a man named William at a tavern or a bar in Lima, Ohio. So he traveled from Florida to Ohio. <clears throat> they were drinking at this bar where he ended up uh, taking him outside and strangling him. And then dumped his body in the woods. I feel like... <clears throat> Not that you should ever kill anyone. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, please. Mm -hmm. Strangling has got to be the worst, right? I would think because so. Because you're, like, fighting for your You're life. fighting, and it takes your strength versus so theirs, strength. whereas, like, obviously, gun is yeah. easy kill, an object is easy kill, poisoning yeah. is an easy kill. Yeah. Why Why make that your go-to? Well, I don't know. Maybe DNA? Cause maybe. You're, maybe. I'm just trying to flex on the camera, really. But in the 70s, like, DNA wasn't really a yeah, thing. Yeah, it's not a thing. Know? You also said strangle. Yeah. Five times. So, I don't know. yeah, I don't know either. I don't understand it. Hmm. That's a lot of strength. Maybe it's just, like, uh, aggression takes over and, like, that's, that's all you have. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's all you have with you. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Anyways. So, he stole his wallet and car, and from Ohio, he drove all the way out to California, back to California, to Sacramento. Um, but on the way, he stopped in L.A., I think it's L.A., Nevada, uh, where he murdered two campers, um, Emmett and Lois. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, like, my biggest fear, camping. Oh, my God. That's why I don't camp. I love camping, though. Oh, why? It's just fun. It's so mm -hmm. nature-y and relaxing, but I'm like, anybody... You know, we're so That's adamant terrifying. about locking our doors That's and terrifying. having security. And, and sleeping outside and someone can come up and <laughs> like you know, strangle she, you. Like, they can just yeah. cut it open. Yeah. Or set it on fire. Right. Yeah, that's weird. That's terrifying. <laughs> so, three days later on September 21st, uh, he ended up going back down from California to Texas. And he spotted a female driving a motorcycle. She was stand stranded on the side of the road, and she was asking for help. So he stopped, and he was like, oh, I'll help her. Um, he ended up raping her, and then <sighs> strangled her to death, and he drug her body through a tangled barbed wire fence. 
Wow. And this all had to have happened right off the side of the road. Yep. Yep. It's brutal. <clears throat> Two days later, he met a woman named Anne. She was a beautician in Birmingham, Alabama. So he went from Texas to Alabama. Um, he liked her, and he was like, hey, do you want to travel with me? I'm just kind of, like, traveling all over the country. <sighs> She's like, yeah, actually, I would love to. So she traveled with him and was paying all the expenses, like the hotel and the gas and stuff like that. But he got tired of her, and he ended up killing her six days later. Um, her body's never been found. So this guy basically has no MO. No MO. He is like, I'm going to go wherever I want to go. Yep. It doesn't matter if they're hitchhikers or neighbors or and children or older people. It doesn't matter their age nope. or their social status. Nope. I, just anyone I come across. I'm going to fucking... Yep. yep. Wow. That's, that's... And it's happening... So, California to Texas. Two days. Yeah. I was going to say, it's got to be this... I've made the Oklahoma slash Missouri drive to California, and that's two days. Yeah. Like you, he's just on their own. That's so scary, scary. and and you can't nail down that you even have a serial killer active. No, because he's going literally all everywhere, all over the country, all over the country. Yeah. So at this time, um, he is driving through Oklahoma and Missouri and Iowa and Minnesota. He did not kill anybody the rest of the month of September until October nineteenth. Um, he said that he needed a fix and uh, ended up in Virginia. So back over to the East Coast. So, yep, went from so Alabama. So much geography in this story. Yep, went Holy from shit. Alabama back through Oklahoma, through Missouri, through Iowa, through Minnesota, and drove all the way out to Virginia. Okay, one. I yep. know we're talking about, like, not inflate inflated times. Right. How is he affording the gas? Because he's stealing cards and money and everything from all of his victims at this time. Oh. Okay. So anyone that he kills, he's stealing from them. Okay. Yep. Well, he must have picked some rich motherfuckers because that's yeah. a lot of fucking gas. A lot of gas. Jeez. A lot of gas. So, um, ended up in Virginia. He broke into the home of a 53-year-old woman named Doris. Um, instead of strangling her, he shot her with her husband's rifle. Um, he wiped off the prints on the gun, and he left the gun next to her body. Also, why does he have to pick old ladies with the sweetest names? Doris, I Alice. I know. It's so weird. So sad. So the police, uh, whenever they came to investigate, they didn't find any signs of robbery or any signs of sexual abuse. Um, there was literally no motive to what he did. So again, back to his M.O. Um, it would consistently change, as we've already talked about. Um, sometimes he would break into homes. Other times he would pitch up hitchhikers. Sometimes he would rape people. Other times he would strangle people. Sometimes he would use a gun. Sometimes he would rob his victims, etc. Like, he was a lust and thrill murderer. He was just wanting the attention. He was craving that type of activity. And he essentially wanted to be famous. He wanted to be exactly like the criminals that he idolized and that he was obsessed with. Yeah, and without DNA, you would literally have no idea that any of these are connected. Absolutely. <clears throat> any of them. Right. You're talking west to east coast and to everywhere Midwest, in between. To the top northeast. You to, have no yeah, idea. That's a, that is an south. investigator's nightmare. And right. like, okay, so what year are we in now? S still the same 1974. Yeah. No. No DNA. No DNA. DNA isn't even a thought. No. Right now. Not even a thought. So. Right. You have, okay, and recently I dealt with some credit card identity theft, and let me just tell you from that alone, I have had to contact eight different jurisdictions to, think, to report it, eight different checks. So, okay, we're talking about XYZ murders mm -hmm. across all these states. Come the, on. It's, it's so many states, but then you get down to jurisdiction. Right. And then you get down, these people do not communicate. Not at These all. jurisdictions, no. even within the same state, do not they communicate. 
at all. It's so sad. Yeah. So, and again, can you I know, imagine? I know I compared it to credit card. But they though, don't. They don't. But I'm saying it works the same with any kind of yep. criminal case. And like, sure, when, once you deal with like more prolific things, like you're going to get investigators that communicate. But at but this even point, then. there's no connecting the dots. So no. they don't know to contact no. these other people. And he's still on the run. Yeah, like he broke out of jail. Like he is a he fugitive. A lock. <laughs> he picked a lock. I am so pissed <laughs> about this lock. He lured the dog in. With Literally, or I have a bike chain with a four-letter <laughs> code that you cannot fucking pick. Okay. Use those instead of whatever lock you have. I'm right. pissed. I know. Okay, anyways. I feel bad so, for Tony's mom because I'm like <laughs> yelling. <laughs> She's probably laughing. Um, so this time he's still driving that guy's car, William. The guy that he strangled in oh. Ohio out, outside of the bar. And Ohio is way, way north. north. I know. Guys, you're getting a geography lesson today. Yeah, for those of you that live in, like, California and New York and you don't know where any other fucking states are, now you do. Anyway. Yeah, it's this way, this way, this way, this way, and everywhere, like, in, <laughs> in between. between. I, funny story, I swear to God. Okay. <laughs> Good, so, because it's not to be pissed. Yeah. Listen to this. So, you know, I travel for work, right? Yes, I know that. I swear to God, people in California and New York, they'll be like, oh, where do you live? And I say, I say Missouri. They're like... Missouri? Where's that at? I'm like, wait, you're kidding, right? They're like, no. I'm like, the middle of the country. Literally the heart of America. Like, the middle of the country. They're like, they would be like, oh, like, by Nevada? I'm like, <gasps> no. Nevada? That's like two hours away from them. Right. Cadence, people in California Idiots. and New York do not know where any other states are unless they are That's border weird. states. So when I lived in California and I told, I would just tell people I'm from the Midwest and like, oh, you're like little Dorothy and Toto. Yeah, well, if you would say Missouri, they'd be like, where's that? <laughs> like, what the fuck? They're like, wait, is that a country? They also said I had an accent, which people I guess I'm starting say to that learn. About me too. Do you have an accent? Yes. I'm like, I do not have an accent. Do we have an accent? Leave a comment Leave below. A comment. If you're from California or New York, do you know where Missouri is? Because I feel you know. like New Yorkers have an accent, and I feel like Californians yes, have an accent. Do. And I feel, like, I feel like we're the in-between. Like, we're just the accentless. Well, there's some people in Missouri that do have, like, oh, a southern accent, but... For sure. There's a lot of people in Missouri who don't have an accent, and I feel like we don't have an No, accent. I feel like we don't. And I feel like we do yeah. get a lot of southern transplants oh, yeah. mixed with, like, um, Chicago yeah. accents. Yeah. So you get, like, the Carnes and the... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know another example, but... <laughs> <laughs> You get that Chicago accent. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I feel like we're, I we just don't have any Anything. accent. Yeah. We're like, nope, not today. Okay. We're educated. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> anyway, so he's still driving William's car, the poor guy that he strangled in Ohio. Okay. Um. Shit, this mic stand is... <laughs> right by the mic, too. Yeah. Well, ASMR value yeah. for you. For your day. It's on you. Okay. Um, he is now in Key West, Florida. I so, love Key West. I know, is but he he's really like, Key West? Uh, uh, not really. Okay. Uh, he picked Good. up two hitchhikers with full anticipation on killing them. He was set to kill them. Okay. But he gets pulled over. In some other dude's car. Yes. Okay. A stolen vehicle. Stolen vehicle. The officer lets him go with a warning. <gasps> and he ended up, like, freaking out. He's, like, tweaking. He's like, whoa, I know I'm wanted. I'm a fugitive. Whoa, this is weird. They just let me go. He's like, I can't kill them. Not tonight. Okay, one. 
the officer wasn't like, hey, man, can I see your ID? And he looks at it and he's like, oh, this guy picked a lock. <laughs> oh, prison. yeah, this guy's like missing from our state. This is a Houdini. From Florida. <laughs> yeah. From this Florida. Is the Houdini of Florida. And uh, you're also in a stolen truck and you and got some fugitives. Right. With you. Right. So, nothing happened that Florida, night. Y'all are a different breed. A little bit. A little bit. He drops off the hitchhikers in Miami. He then called his attorney for advice. He is like, "Wait, hey, this guy has an attorney, an, an, an attorney, attorney on call? call." I know, I know, <laughs> I know. He it's one thing to contact an attorney, but to contact no your attorney. attorney. Yep, I'm pissed. I know, I'm pissed too. Maybe his attorney gave him the keys to break out of jail. For sure. I this know. attorney needs to be lived into. Yeah, he needs to, his license needs to be gone. Anyway, uh, the attorney tells him, hey, I recommend that you surrender. And he's like, <laughs> you think? <laughs> you <laughs> broke out of jail, you <laughs> think? Hey, I think you should continue to live your life <laughs> until you Yeah, he was like, listen, I just got pulled over. I got I got away. Like, they gave me a warning. What do you think I I should do? Well, I think you should surrender. <laughs> no. Wow. No, not today. Not He's today. like, thanks, man. He's like, yeah, that'll be a $250 charge for this phone right, call. Right, for this like, phone call. Right, right. So, instead, he's like, nope, not surrendering. But what I will do is I will record a confession tape with everything that I have done, and I will mail it to my attorney. And that's what he did. Okay, wait though. Yep, he's gonna mail it to his attorney. He mailed it to his attorney. I feel like the attorney was in on that. Crimes. All I crimes. think the attorney was in on that. It's weird, right? Because why? Why as the the guilty person would you do that? I think the attorney was like, "Hey man, you are going down hard." Right. There's no way for me out of this. There's, There's no way for you out of, this. out of this. Let's go out with confession tape with, with an bang. infamous bang. Yep. Confession tape. Yep. Send it to me, and I'll submit it. Because why would he send it to the attorney? If, why? If he why? if he wanted that's attorney client privilege. You can say whatever the fuck you want. You can yeah. Be like, yeah. I'm well, that person. and if if just he wanted the fame, he right. would send that to authorities exactly. and cut his attorney out. It wasn't fame. That just shows he wasn't a narcissist. Yeah. Like, it's weird. I think the attorney was in on this. I know. Like, this we need to look into the Media attorney. fame. Agreed. So Allegedly. 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 November 2nd, he is now in Georgia. So not too far up from Florida. But, yeah, in Georgia. Macon, Georgia. I've been to Macon, and it is terrifying. Why is it terrifying? Oh my god, okay, so listen, I performed in Macon, Georgia, Yeah. and one, listen, I don't care how you feel about people from different, um, like, sexual backgrounds, but these people are so anti, anti LGBT that even, like, wow. us coming in as a theater group, and we were a kid's show, they picketed. <gasps> this was also during the Trump and Hillary election that oh we were there. Gosh. They and listen, I don't care. I don't wow. care what you, what who you chose to vote for. Hmm. Every business there had Hillary nooses. <gasps> kill Hillary. Like and listen again. I don't care who That's you want to vote for. Crazy. It was bad. We were told not to get off our tour bus. It was that bad. Well, and especially if Megan, they're picketing y'all were scary. You, they were like, picketing us because of just you being were a kids show. Just being theater, they associated, they associated that with gay LGBT, people. Yeah, and they they like even the people helping us out, like set up the theater, were like very hesitant with us. Mm, Megan, y'all were scary. Anyways, continue. <laughs> so, if you're from Megan, Georgia, you owe her an apology. Apologize, and yeah. also been me ten dollars. <laughs> She takes payment in Starbucks gift cards. Anyway. <laughs> Scary place. Otherwise, it would have been beautiful. I just wanted a Georgia peach, and y'all gave me, like, hate speech. But Georgia peaches bad. aren't really a thing. I learned that in Georgia. Georgia peaches are a fucking lie. They are a lie. You guys need to change your license plate. Anyway. 
November 2nd in Macon, Georgia. Two more hitchhikers went missing. Um, there's no proof that he murdered them, that Knowles murdered them, but it's speculated because it fits his somewhat MO. Like, they just went missing. Okay. But it was known that he was in Georgia as a He fact. was. Yep. He was in Georgia at that okay. time. Because November 6th, four days later, um, he made a friend. Uh, he liked her, like, kind of like a girlfriend type friend, okay. but... Ended up killing her in her home and her 15-year-old daughter. <gasps> yeah. Same okay. thing. Also, her how are her. attorneys not held responsible as, like, uh, what is it called? Like, not witness. Like an accomplice. An accomplice. I don't know. Unless the attorney was just like, I didn't know where he was. I know there is attorney-client privilege, but when it becomes dangerous, I think you still have a due diligence. Like, you are representing the law. You are representing the Constitution. And you should still turn people in like that. Like Okay, two, okay, maybe this is why, though. It's not like, I mean, the attorney did say turn yourself in. It's not like the attorney is responsible for going and finding him. Right. So maybe that's it. But, but I'm if just he like, is a danger to others or themselves or anybody, like you, I don't know. It, it, attorney client. Any attorney is listening, please chime in. Explain us. Explain <laughs> us. Explain <laughs> to us what the fuck is going explain on. Explain why we are the way we are and then explain this psychopath. Because <laughs> if you had a client... Who told you that he murdered? Yeah, and dozens then continue to murder. And yeah. all your advice is, is turn it, turn yourself, turn yourself in. in. I don't know. I feel like, yeah. I I mean, I don't know what more you could do, but right. I feel like you could offer more advice and turn yourself in. Right. Maybe like I don't know, not answer the phone, have the police tap in when you answer the phone. Something track where the videotape came from. I don't yeah. Know. Anyways. So, uh, two days later, November 8th, he met a British journalist named Sandy. Uh, they were flirty and ended up spending the next few days together, but he couldn't perform during sex. So, uh, two days later, uh, they said their goodbyes. That's a real story. Wait, that's it? No, we're not done. Oh, Okay. <laughs> The next day, I was like, wow. Like, that, and, okay. Well, and she's lucky. I yep. hope she understands how lucky she right. is. The next day, he picked up her accomplice, or the person that she worked with, and uh, demanded sex from her at gunpoint. Uh, she ended up escaping, thankfully. She called the police, uh, where he got pulled over. But he pulled out a sawed-off shotgun, pointed it at the police officer, and was able to get away. Okay, what is the point of sawing off the shotgun? I know people do that. a barrel. So what does that do is my... It's just it's a quicker shoot. Oh. It's just a shorter barrel. Because don't shotgun bullets, like, when they shoot out, they, like, fray? Yeah. So it's that means if it's shorter, but it frays it's, sooner? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's just a, it's a shorter barrel. All right. That's it. Because if you think of a shotgun, like, the barrel is fucking long. Like, four feet, three feet long. But a sawed-off, it's, like, short. Yeah. So, they're actually pretty cool. But... <laughs> oh, my God. What? They look pretty cool. It's like a short little shotgun. It's kind of badass. So, you're saying they're cute. <laughs> I mean... I no just didn't comment. know what, like, the purpose of that was, like, as a murderer. As a What's murderer, I think it's just because it's a smaller gun, you know? Because if you think about a shotgun, like, lugging it around, it's big. Yeah, that's So true. a sawed-off is just shorter. It's smaller to conceal. It's smaller to, like, put in the side of your, you know, seat in your car. Like, yeah. it's just it's smaller. Yeah. So. That makes sense. Yeah. It's easier to, like, lug around, mm -hmm. but. It's kind of why, like, people have pistols, you know, because it's a smaller gun. Yeah. So. But pistols, you have to be a more accurate shot, right? I mean, you have to be an accurate shot with all of it. I mean, a shotgun, per se, 
You're probably Maybe it's because it's I'm thinking of like easier. turkey hunting specifically. With turkey hunting, you use a bullet where the bullet splits. Right. So you don't have to have like a dead on shot. You don't want a whole hole blowing the animal apart. Right. You want like six little bullets. Yeah. That ki- yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyways, okay. I know nothing about guns she or knows hunting. Nothing about guns. I've been turkey hunting once, and it right. was the worst hunting, five a.m. morning yeah, of my I, life. Hunting is terrible. Yes. Anyway. So, uh, November sixteenth, eight days later, uh, Highway Patrol officer Campbell recognized the stolen car that he was in. Uh, he pulled Knowles over. And uh, Knowles ended up wrestling the gun away from Officer Campbell. He took Officer Campbell hostage, drove away in the patrol car. He then turned the sirens on and pulled over a guy on a motorcycle, took him hostage (laughs) to, took them both to a wooded area in Pulaski County, Georgia, where he handcuffed them to a tree and shot them both in the head and killed them. <laughs> yeah. What a night! <laughs> like, yeah. What a night! It doesn't end there because obviously at this time Campbell had seen the vehicle and obviously like radioed it, radioed it in and said, "Hey, we have our guy. This is where he's at. I'm I'm gonna arrest him." Yeah. So other officers were in pursuit, you know, to come to that area. So. He shoots and kills the police officer and the other bystander, poor guy, um, in the head. He then crashed the car through a police barricade where um, the car stopped running. So he got out of the vehicle and he start running, started running on foot in a wooded area. The police officers are firing shots at him and he's firing shots at the police officers. Where um, another officer shot him in the foot with returning fire. His name was Officer <laughs> Howard. <laughs> this night is insane. Oh, I know. It's not over yet. It's crazy. <laughs> so, he's still running on foot throughout this wooded area. Kept running. I mean, there are helicopters. Dogs. The whole police... Station with probably multiple counties. They brought in Dr. Phil (laughs) and fucking Maury. It was nuts. They have civilians looking through this wooded area for him. If I was a civilian, I'd be like, hell no. no. Y'all got your helicopters and dogs. Y'all are crazy. The next day, he was cornered by a bystander. A 27-year-old Vietnam War veteran, David Clark. David Clark had a shotgun and held Knowles at gunpoint until uh, the investigators or the police officers arrived and they arrested Paul and took his ass to jail. All that effort and it was a bystander. All that effort and it was a bystander. But Vietnam War vet. That's true. He sounded like a badass. Yeah. He's like, fuck you. You move, I'm shooting. I ain't scared, so fucking flinch. Wow. That is, what a night. Like, you wake what up the night. next day and you're like, oh, oh. I'm a little sore. What the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah, I was like, what happened? Oh, I was yeah, like, I shot two people in the head and, and ran, like, ran and from an entire state was looking for you. <laughs> the entire state. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I know. And wow. Then, oh. Wow. A month later, December 18th, Sheriff Earl Lee and FBI agent Ronnie Angel were traveling down Interstate 20 in Georgia with Paul Knowles. Uh, he was handcuffed in the back seat. I swear to God, if he picks the fucking lock, I'm going to flip this table <laughs> Over, I will end the podcast. I will chop her head off. So you better hope she doesn't say that he picks the lock and kills them. I will be pissed. Okay, continue with your story. <laughs> knowing that your life is oh, on the God. line. All right. <laughs> you want the truth or a lie? <laughs> oh my God! Don't tell me he picks the lock. <laughs> they were driving to the 
location of where the officer Cam Officer Campbell's gun was last located because Knowles had taken the gun and took him at you know gunpoint and ended up shooting and killing him. But he dumped the gun mm -hmm. whenever he was on the run. Mm -hmm. So the police officers were like, hey, we're going to take you back to the scene. We want you to find the gun because we need to recover the gun. He's yeah. like, all right. Knowles had a paper clip. <laughs> and he picked the lock and freed himself from the handcuffs. He reached from the back seat grabbed the sheriff's gun and fired around in the holster. FBI agent Angel then, while still driving, shot three shots at Noel's chest and killed him. No more lockpicking. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I was about... I mean, you were about to lose your life. I know. <laughs> that, was that was the deal. Gamble. That was the deal. That was the deal. She is safe. However, because he died. <laughs> that a paper clip. A paper clip. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least he's dead. He's dead. So until this day, like that FBI agent won't talk about it. He hasn't That's talked sad. about it. That really, really is sad. I know. It is that would sad. be traumatizing, especially to know that like. Obviously, the way handcuffs and locks work aren't up to you as an officer or an investigator. Exactly. Exactly. That's completely out of your control. But that's got to be the most infuriating Can't even imagine. piece of like this entire puzzle is that all this guy had to do was just pick this lock and your lives are at risk. Yep. So. so. Confirmed. Wow. 18 victims, but could be 35 in a short five months. Period. Five months. In 1974. Jeez. Have they ever gone back in now that there is DNA testing and like reopened these cases or no? They have, but there wasn't much DNA evidence anyway. Yeah. Yep. Well, so, and just like a lot of the bodies weren't even found. Right. So. Yeah. Hmm. And he wasn't alive enough after being arrested. Only arrested for a month. Before he died. How old was he when he died? Ooh, 1974. Uh, 28. 28 years old. 28. 28 years old. Jesus. Yeah. 28 years old. Listen, guys. Wild. There's nothing so wrong in your life that you have to resort to that. At 28 years old. Holy shit, yeah. We have so many resources available now. I mean, go to a church. Like, even if you're not religious or you don't believe in God, like, go yeah. to a church, they have programs available. It's just so sad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this person was obviously pretty freaking intelligent. Very intelligent. And handy. In a bad way. Yeah. In a bad way. Picking a prison lock? I can't get past that detail. I know. It's like... And then at, that's when he committed, like, all of his murders while being out of prison. Of prison. He was... All of his murders. ...stopped by the cops <laughs> after escaping prison in a stolen car. I know. That is inexcusable. I know. It's Though, wild. I'm sorry. Those officers, y'all done fucked that one up. I know. Wild, huh? So that is the story of Paul John Knowles. Wow. The Casanova. I can't believe killer. I've never heard that one. No, right? Yeah. Did you I hear it before you looked up Aries Killers? Uh-uh. No. Wow. That's the first time that I heard of him. I'm going to have to see if there's like documentaries or something on yeah, it. Yeah, there are. There are quite a few. Huh. Yeah. I Interesting. Know. I know. Well, guys, so. we're officially ending our night. And the bottle of wine. And the vino. Yes. So... Thank you to our patrons. Wait, the sale will be over when this one comes out. I don't know. We might continue it. You, you know, never know. You should check out our merch. It depends. We'll see. How on it goes. something sinisterpodcast.com. We're wearing our merch today for you guys. We, are. we just added more Alexa designed phone cases in every single color imaginable yep. for every phone case imaginable. Yep. Also AirPods. Yep. Um, they say something sinister. Social club. Excuse me. Social club. They are awesome. So cute. And you can get 20% off. Yep. At least maybe. 
Coven 20, see if it works. And if it doesn't, then message her we and say, it on. hey, the code doesn't work. Yep. But also thank you to our patrons. Yes. So we've got a $1, $5, and $10 option on we Patreon. Do. And you fully support the podcast. You get to tell us how we're doing. You get to send us suggestions. You get to yep. vote on our merch that we yep. sell. Yep. So you guys keep these uh, ring lights on. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right. Stay sinister, y'all. <laughs> we have a sponsor. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sponsor, and it is, it is not the one. <laughs> I ended. I'm like, she just won the whole my hand. I did. I did. She didn't kill me tonight. So I did. Um, Color Up CBD is our sponsor. Use code Semester20 at ColorUpCo.com to buy all of your skincare needs and CBD needs, especially that vitamin C serum. It is the shit. shit. So all right, all right now. <laughs> Stay sinister. Bye. <laughs>